Hi, welcome back to the Stories from the Ashes podcast, where we pontificate on books and the stories that define and refine us. I am Amber, and I am here today with Amanda and our friend Jan McGrath. Hi, Jan. Welcome. Hi. Jan is one of the members of our Reshelving Alexandria community, and she is going to share with us today about the Chinese books that she uses in her home. And Jan, would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners and maybe tell us three books that have been really influential or meaningful in your life? Sure. Um, my name is Jan, and my Chinese name is Leung Yut Ming. Um, I have uh, really enjoyed this whole Charlotte Mason journey of home education, which is so contrary to my Chinese upbringing. So, however, being that my children are biracial, I make a point to infuse uh, our culture, Chinese culture, into our home education. This is the beauty of it, right? Yes. Uh, my three favorite books yeah. are uh, Chernow's Hamilton and uh, Gaskell's Wives and Daughters. And the third one, oh, golly, um, I really like Elliot Silas Marner and also uh, Dickens' David Copperfield. I know that's more than three. <laughs> so that's <I> okay. <laughs> oh, what are some so of the So what do you love aspects? about those books? Yeah. I'm sorry, what was your question? I, I missed that. What do you love about those books? Oh, well, I... Uh, Hamilton was uh, raised by a single mom, and in the story of uh, Gaskell's, uh, there are single uh, parents that are raising uh, children. Yep. And um, my father passed when I was nine, so I was raised largely by a single mom. So they inspire me, and they show what can be done uh, with uh, parents that love and are dedicated. It can be done. And um, with Hamilton, he was uh, he was a self learner, and I really believe with just thirty four books in his home library, you know, he became an incredible writer for which he was propelled from the uh, Saint Kitts, the West Indies, to the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we all know he authored the Federalist Papers with John Jay and Madison. Um, and he became the developer of uh, he became our first. A secretary of treasury and he was one of our, one of our founding fathers so mm -hmm. it's very inspiring um yeah. and then of course gaskell uh, apart from her beautiful writing i again i just love how um these parents that are single uh do their best and um amazing amazing uh storyline i don't want to give yeah. them the outcome <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate that. That's on my my short list of classics that I somehow missed reading in high school that I will probably actually enjoy more now anyway. So yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. I haven't, I haven't read Wives and Daughters in forever, but I love her. I love that one. And I loved some of her other books actually more. Have you read her other books? No, I, um, oh, well, no, I, 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 no, I, no, I did not. And I was going to mention uh, Dickens, Copperfield's, um, the book that he authored. I also like that book a lot because he was basically an orphan, right? And mm -hmm. um, again, uh, different uh, uh, individuals in his life's life, um, though he was an orphan, he became an amazing person. And it's a great coming of age book. Well, is you should definitely read North and South, because they have a single mother in that book who okay. overcomes overwhelming obstacles. Mm -hmm. And I've been after Amber to read it for it's true. years. <laughs> and eventually, someday she'll read it because it's really worthwhile. But I think you'll be really impressed by the okay. single mother in well, that one, too. Yeah, that's thank you. Yeah, I like how you mentioned with David Copperfield how it's a coming of age book. I was reading someone's. Uh, review on that book yesterday and they were saying that they really liked how um, how the author had used the, uh, the uh, how do I say this how the author had called David by different names throughout the book yes. different nicknames yes. 
to show yes. the passing of time as he's yes. growing. And they, they were saying it's an excellent coming of age book. And they yes. really yeah. liked that element that the author threw in. So you yeah. mentioned that you use books to incorporate into your homeschool, your, your heritage. And right. I know that there's, there's a big movement right now, especially in the homeschool um, literature-based homeschool communities to do what they're calling heritage threads, where they study their cultural heritage timeline alongside whatever other timeline their curriculum is using, which I think is fascinating and mad props to these mm -hmm. moms and dads that are doing it because I know they're reinventing the wheel and they're, or they're not reinventing the wheel. Okay. They're creating a wheel. They're doing this for the first <laughs> time. And there's so much effort that goes into something, doing it for the first time. And I just really appreciate that. But I, I thought that what you were doing was had done before this whole thing was just great because you were telling me that the main focus that you guys did it around was food. And I think that's a great way for people to put their toe in the water or the water if they're just overwhelmed by where do I even start? How do I find these books? These picture books with food are just prevalent in the libraries right now, which is amazing. And so could yeah. you tell us more about, about your journey with that? Well, you know, I, I certainly like to eat and <laughs> you know, don't it's we so all easy, it's so easy to uh, dive into food and um, I'm mm -hmm. sure we all know the the classic Chinese food the sweet and sour pork and beef and broth we probably have seen it at Panda Express or some yeah, are those actually Chinese or are those Americanized <laughs> Chinese foods um, <laughs> <laughs> well you know those dishes are truly Chinese but you're right. They do become a little more Americanized to the American palate. Um, mm -hmm. Here's a good example. I know we're all familiar with this book, Ping. Mm -hmm. um, this was published in 1933. And it's such a simple story. And in this book, they are, they're on junk boats. They make a living off the Yangtze. And fish is the basic commodity. And fish in Chinese culture means longevity. It's very important in our culture. It's a homophone for affluence. I don't know if you know oh. in the Chinese language, there's a lot of hom uh, homophones, which cause a lot mm -hmm. of confusion. Yeah. <laughs> like you can call your mom, oh. mom or horse. But I, and even when he says, lie, 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 it to, to prompt the ducks to come back on the, uh, the uh, the plank that's a chinese word that means come you know so oh. to my kids this book is just you know a, a a wonderful picture book but in the in the storyline even the um the uh fact that there's um i just love how there's you, you can see the junk boats in the back right and mm -hmm. uh which is so different from the shanty boats down the mississippi and the fact that um, that you see a lot of fam family involvement. So Chinese culture is very familial. There's a lot of filial piety, so reverence for the elders. So, um, and they, even when the little boy goes into the water, he does it with, uh, with obedience. There is no question. There's no, mm -hmm. the only person that gets spanked is pink. You know, because he was, oh, okay. you know, he was the stray, the stray duck, right? Because he just kind of goes out right. off and he misses the boat, literally. Um, <laughs> so I, um, so when in doing this, I do make steamed fish um, uh, to, again, uh, go back to our heritage. Because if you go to China or um, Hong Kong, there's not a lot of land to go horizontally and the major cities so everything is vertical so people commonly steam their food so when you actually eat chinese cuisine many of them there is stir fry and there is a lot of steamed food um, wait so, what does what does the vertical building have to do with steamed food well i had learned through my grandparents that um the ovens uh the stovetops were very small and steaming you can steam food Upward, oh, right. And okay. so when you, uh, you don't need a lot of um, space. space to actually, you don't need right. four burners. You can have one burner and, and make a, a full uh, dinner or lunch or what have you. So yeah. a lot of my those, grandparents, those they, cook, they, they stack yeah. their, 
Yeah. Right. Yes. They stack their food so they can concurrently cook and there would be the vegetables, the main entree, the fish and so forth. So um, getting back to it. the book King, um, the, the fact that the, the, you know, obviously we know that ancient cultures, a lot of river um, cultures uh, lived by the river. The Yangtze was the mighty river that people lived off and we can go down the historical path and we can go into um, the cultural path. Uh, when I talk to my kids, how important uh, uh, family and extended family is uh, to the Chinese culture. So, I mean, it's a very simple picture book, but in, in like 20 pages, I, I've, cov- I've covered history, our culture, and our food in one little tiny book. <laughs> that's, right. That's so fascinating because yeah. the story of Ping yeah. is one of those that's old enough that I would have assumed that it wasn't really very accurate mm-hmm. representing the Chinese culture. So it's really fascinating to hear you say that, yeah, there is a lot of, a lot yes. we can take away from it. I mean, certainly we don't wear any of those hats anymore and, um, yeah. <laughs> and we don't have the long braids, but the, the attire, forgetting the attire, um, I could, and I can go into a different direction. I could say, this is how ancient China used to be, but more than anything for, for my children, I want them to know kind of the cultural norms and uh, obviously the foods that we eat. I don't know if you noticed in the background, I forgot to mention the, 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 the family of pandas. Mm-hmm. And the They're back. adorable. They're so cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, obviously that's pretty huge. And, um, Chinese culture. You probably remember these books, the uh, the five Chinese brothers. Uh, I don't know if you remember mm-hmm. this book. This mm-hmm. is from 1938. Um, and this is That's called The Seven Claire Brothers. Claire Huchet Bishop. Um, and if you're, guess- if you're guessing that the storylines are similar, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's the same idea that they all, um, is, I, I, you can see this here, they work together to overcome the odds and there's a lot of family allegiance. And in this particular book, uh, the five brothers, they have these phenomenal gifts, right? One could swallow up Mm -hmm. water. One could handle heat in the hot oven. But I, I think the, the picture that really grabs me is this right here. Do you see how the mom sits in front of her five sons? Yeah. Again, yeah. that shows uh, reverence and filial piety, um, uh, the respect to elders. Um, uh, and again, it's just a simple picture book. But again, I, right. I like for the kids to know this is how I was raised, that, you know, we, we obey our, our elders. We don't question them. Yeah. We just kind of, okay, <laughs> that mm-hmm. type of thing. So those were just three books right there. And I, I'm sure you've seen these in the library, maybe. Oh, yeah. Know. Okay. They're really uh, widespread. Mm-hmm. This is another book. It's called Gaizi. And I love this book because um, they're going to, uh, Gaizi means I'm going to go shopping. We're going to go shopping. And the illustrations in this book are absolutely, absolutely gorgeous because to me, they represent so much of what you would see. I, I was in Hong Kong before uh, uh, I came here to the United States. And so the pictures seen here are so true. Um, it's not uncommon, for example, to be walking and shopping and just say, oh, let's just go over here and just stand and eat our lunch. Now here they're sitting down. Uh, they're having a uh, ramen. Yeah. Um and eating with chopsticks and um you know people on a saturday afternoon will hang out their wares um and i just love the fact that even the plastic bag you know this is before environmental paper or plastic Mm -hmm. option (laughs) this would be pretty (laughs) much this would be the classic plastic bag um i just love the illustrations and, and even the awnings that you see that are very colorful i when I was in San Francisco, downtown um, Chinatown, this is what I saw. The streets are very narrow. And um, and did you notice how the sister is holding the brother, the little sister's uh, hand? Mm-hmm. So 
I'm sure that many families rely on the older sibling to handle, you know, to care for the younger. But in Chinese culture, you are like, you know, you, you could be tarred and feathered if something should happen to the little one under your care, you know. So it's a huge responsibility. And at the very end of the book, what I love is, did you, there's a, there's a little bird in the cage. Um, my family uh, usually, uh, my grandparents usually had a bird in the cage or a cricket in a cage. And if you remember Cricket in Times Square, is that yeah. the book? There's a character in there and he has a cricket in a cage. And it was not uncommon for my relatives to either, you would hear a cricket or you would have a bird you know, going tweet, 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 or cricket, 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 whatever, um, in the background, because they, they revered the, well, they love the sound, but also that they loved that the, um, they, it was just part of my culture. I, I also yeah. wanted to point out this particular picture. If you see it there, there's a ton of produce. Um, getting back to what I said earlier, Chinese cooking is a lot of steaming. So we ate a lot of vegetables, bok choy, broccoli, um, snap peas, bean sprouts, often steamed, often steamed. And um, so when my kids are wondering, why are we not eating pizza and hot dog? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I'm Chinese. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> so, quick question about bok choy. Did mm -hmm. you put anything on it or was it just plain? So what I, I, my husband is American, so it, it can be pretty bland. So uh, the first time I, I just did it, salt, pepper, steam, and it still tasted like vanilla to him. So what I did is I steam it and then I would put a side of garlic oil and I put it in a hot wok and then I'll mm. toss it uh, or hot pan and I'll toss it just very quickly to give it that garlic oil taste to it. And it he's fine <laughs> yeah okay Good oh, that's funny. I, I i grew I'm, it one year and it grew like prolifically and i had no idea what to do with it all oh yeah yeah, yeah i love it i it probably so completely butcher it with how i americanize my cooking of it but i just saute it with um sesame seeds at the end but we just yeah. saute it in soy sauce and yeah. then the kids, the kids really like it that way. Yeah, that's that's good too. Yeah, that's so wonderful. I want to I want to say something about the first two books that you shared. So, the story of Ping is by Marjorie Flack and illustrated by Kurt Weiss, and then mm -hmm. the Seven Brothers book by Claire Houchet Bishop is also illustrated by Kurt Weiss, and he was a, a white man, but he lived in China for years, and I really loved how he pulled from his time there and his experience and the illustrations that he did. He actually did a lot of chapter books as well on his time there, and uh, yep, there's another one, Fish in the Air. Yeah. Did he so do the, illustrate the Little Pair books? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. I want to say yes, but then I'd probably be wrong. <laughs> you want to tell Actually, us about that fish, fish in the air? So these two books, the, this Kurt Weiss book, and then this is a another book about kites, Grace Lynn. Kite um, flying. Yes. And so these books, and I don't know if you knew that one of the reasons why kites are such a big deal in Chinese culture is they believe that that's chasing away the bad spirits. Oh. Um, I'm a Christian, by the way, but I'm just like, you know, what the Chinese yeah. yeah. So um, making them, uh, like this book actually goes into how you can make them. They, they would use bamboo and they would make them as big as they can. And once again, Grace Lynn, she's just so good at illustrating it because she goes from giving you all the uh, supplies you need. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, nice. And then nice. what, what's neat is that you could see once again, the whole family is involved. Yeah. So yep. um, kind of what we saw with um, Ping, how they were right. all in the junk boats, mm -hmm. um, you know, family is very big in the culture. So um, I love Grace Lynn books. She has this book and also this book here, Dim Sum, which um if you did not have dim sum, you know, I'm 
I, I think you guys know what that is, right? The, uh, the tea house. Okay. Oh, the, okay. The Chinese tea house where people, and, and this is actually an excellent book. If you have no idea, she actually illustrates, like you see the little carts and the carts usually has a heating element. Usually it's steam once again. And, um, she not only gives you the ingredients, but she walks you through uh, into as if you're going to go in for the first time. And so notice the circular table. Mm -hmm. It's a lazy Susan. Yes. Um, the reason yeah. it's a circular table for the Chinese circles are very important because it means harmony. That's one of the Chinese virtues that is very important in the culture. Um, and so then it's very common. You don't have to say, Hey, waiter, come over here. There's just a, a train of um, waitresses and waiters that are walking around with hot food on little plates and you just point or you just wave and say, hey, this is what I want. And they just put it on your table. And it's such a fun, fun experience because dim sum in Chinese means to touch the heart. It's a very social thing. It's not uncommon mm -hmm. when we were in Hong Kong to say, I'll meet you at 10 o'clock. Usually it's a brunch and, and we'll have uh, dim sum together. And usually it takes about a couple hours because you're obviously talking. Mm -hmm. Um, you probably will have some, uh, I don't know if you can see this, uh, chrysanthemum tea. This is, nice. um, okay. yeah, I wish you could smell it. It's so fragrant. <laughs> so, uh, and you would have it in a pot like so. Um, this is a gift from, uh, it's so aromatic that this was actually housing jasmine tea, loose leaf, but um, it's so fragrant. So you would have tea at dim sum and the tea and, and the, the rule is you never, ever let anyone's uh, teacup go empty. You'd be, you, you're, you are, the, if you're hosting, you're constantly, you're like, you know, pouring the tea and um, making sure that your your guests ha are loaded up with tea. Everyone has to rush to the bathroom after that. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so for those that are just listening and didn't see the cover of the book, that's Grace Lynn's Dim Sum for Everyone. That looks like yes. such a delightful little book. We that yeah. I, when I was growing up, we had a lot of family friends that were either Filipino or Korean. And I remember going to Korean restaurants and they also did the circular table and at the, you know, the food was just on this big round thing in the middle and went around. So I wonder if it's a similar cultural mm -hmm. reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and speaking of the circles, I don't normally dress this way. <laughs> so I'm worried. I appreciate it. <laughs> It's lovely. It's so I'm pretty. Wearing, I'm wearing a jacket that actually belongs belonged to my mother. She had it made in, in Hong Kong, uh, custom made. And so, do you see the circle? This is a, a circle. It's like and golden. It, yes. Yeah. And it means double happiness. Usually, you wear it for a formal occasion. Um, if uh, typically it's going to be a reception, someone just got married. Um, and on wedding dresses, you probably will see this a lot mm -hmm. not, uh, mm -hmm. on the, on the ladies chong to, to, you know, hope and, uh, that you will right. have double happiness, the joining of yeah. two. Right. So, um, but, uh, yeah, this, um, and it, and it's in the colors of red and, uh, gold. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's almost like metallic. I, I feel like I'm mm -hmm. like Donna Summers right now. <laughs> I don't know if you know who she is, but I love how <laughs> shiny so you are. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's the two colors that you probably see in a Chinese red envelope. That yep. means again, good luck and good fortune and so forth. So just in those books and even just the fact that I have this, I have it in the house. Uh, in fact, my wedding dress, um, I forgot to pull it up. I was wearing a Chongsam. Um, once again, it was red. And once again, to, to uh, convey good luck. So for my children, I not only through books, obviously through food. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I even, I know this is kind of funny, but I, this is a male. He's wearing the traditional Mandarin uh, outfit. And I will use them in uh, conversation when I'm talking in Mandarin. 
um, because I want they they've been learning Mandarin for the last ten years, so um, it, it's just another way for me to make it come alive for them. It's not something that we just put on; it's just something that's immersive in my life. And because I'm Chinese, it's easy for me to do that, you know. Right. So, did your children go- grow up bilingual then? Yes, and unfortunately, with a bilingual home, I, I'm sure you've heard this. It's it's easier to speak English, and it's I've um, heard that e- it's easy for them to speak English. Um, we are in the United States, you know, mm-hmm. so um, <laughs> it's a language is easiest learn in an immersive situation. So, to yep. me, for them to learn conversationally, what I'm saying or uh, to understand what someone else is saying that and what they'll do with it after they they you know go on with their life is um to me all i want is them to have the exposure and if they they do something with it that's great you know like eric liddell we read about him the missionary you know the one that wouldn't race on sunday eric liddell the scotsman yeah the flying scotsman i mean he went to china and yeah. he had to learn Chinese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, I talk to the kids about that. We read about people who use the language and they don't know how God is going to place them, whether for missionary work or for professional work and their ability to speak a, a second language. I say to them, they can increase their friendships by double because they could yeah. speak two languages, you know. That's yeah. such a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. My grandma was half Dutch and half German, but her parents insisted that they would only speak English to her. Mm-hmm. And so she doesn't know a lick. She can't even read the backs of uh, the family photographs to read what was going on in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before I so, forget, I, I mentioned yeah. Chongsam. This is the Chongsam. This is oh, not okay. my wedding dress. This is what a Chongsam looks like. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I would hope that was not your wedding dress. <laughs> it, it actually covers a, like a little bottle. Okay, <laughs> I just wanted to know what I meant. Yep. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> so, so having grown up in the states, how would you contrast yes. what you've probably heard was your mother's experience with education growing up? in China with then your education growing up in the States with then the education you chose to give your children? Well, I cannot say enough about this living education, this Charlotte Mason approach. I am so thankful. You know, when I mentioned that I was going to homeschool, it was like, ah, why? (laughs) Um, And it's kind of like what those people do, but we don't do it. (laughs) I think that learning has really come alive and um, just what I've shown you that I can um, Mm -hmm. infuse our culture um, intentionally and without being um, rushed out the door, the freedom to, to, to bring it uh, learning to life um, is so powerful and amazing and transformative. And I, I think it's also redeeming because Goodness knows if if anyone wants me to learn history, just give me a textbook. And I, uh, if anyone wants me to not like history, just give me yeah. a textbook you know, because it's so yeah. Funny. yeah. <laughs> yep. So yes, it's so different. I think the Chinese mentality is kind of like a drill and kill mentality. That is, work harder to memorize, work harder to just kind of know what you need to know type of thing. Whereas, Would you say it's always been that way, or is that more recent as far for Chinese educational culture? Well, I just know from my uh, upbringing, um, like for example, I used to go to Saturday school, which is a uh, mm-hmm. Chinese language and culture. So Saturday from eight Saturdays from eight to noon, I would go to um, a school to learn how to write, how to speak grammar, everything in Chinese. And then when we went home, we had to memorize and do a lot of flashcards and memory work. Mm. Um, I don't really like that approach. Um, 
and I think the Charlotte Mason and just home education in general, the fact that you can customize and have the liberty to uh, immerse yourself in the direction you want to go. And as you said, heritage threads, um, if, if we wanted to do a unit on just Chinese culture, for example, I could do that um, mm -hmm. and not yep. concern myself about, quote, being behind. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Did you have any other so books that you wanted how, to share with us? Well, this one is... I just don't um, want to miss any. <laughs> this is the... This is the, the Blue Willow Plate. Oh, lovely. Pretty. Mm -hmm. And um, so this blue, this is the legend of the Blue Willow. Uh, there's a story behind this plate. And um, to me, I, I, I've always loved the decor. But in the this, in this story, if I bring it close enough, you can see the pagodas. You can see the willow. You can see water and everything you see on that plate is typical of a Chinese garden. There's rocks, yeah. there's water, and all of that is placed there to represent harmony. The willow is, is a solemn, is representative of a solemn, um, uh, situation. And the story is that the father wants his daughter to marry a well, uh, the wealthy, she's been, uh, there's a planned marriage. She doesn't want the person. She falls in love with the pauper and they run away. And death comes to the, the two that elope. And so they live forever as these two the birds. birds up high. Do you see them? Yeah, they're lovely. So this one, and so um, again, that plate tells so much about Chinese gardens about how yeah. important the harmony is and so this book is great for telling that story the legend of legend the willow plate the willow plate um there's a bridge most chinese gardens typical chinese gardens will have a bridge um uh and so this plate um is part of our dinnerware and i again for my kids even though that they may not be told in in a lesson hey today we are going to learn about chinese architecture <laughs> we don't do that no. <laughs> um, they, they can see it for themselves right and yeah. through these picture books that i've just shown you right um even these these two books here by uh one is by demi i think they're both by demi yes okay um the, the empty uh, pot and the greatest treasure i'm sorry and the greatest treasure yes and the empty pot with uh, there is a there's a story of virtue here um mm -hmm. i love that book what i thought was really yeah and here again you see in this beautiful illustrations what a typical chinese garden will have yeah. you will always have rock to represent fortitude um you will always have water um again to to represent uh, uh maybe there's a lotus flower in there um it means life you know i talked about the yangtze river um and it's just beautifully illustrated and um the kids may not know why these people dress this way but mm -hmm. as you know with picture books it starts a conversation right right um, yeah and um I, I just love the fact that the, and the paintings are just so beautiful. Even this guy's outfit. I mean, you know, they don't mm -hmm. see anyone dressed like this in the United States. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so naturally I, we talk about the emperor and, yeah. um, which leads me actually to this book. I know this is not a picture book, but I know you guys know the book. It's called the good earth, right? Pearl S. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, uh, when we read this book, I mean, if we don't know what an emperor looks like, uh, because you know, I believe you right. know the story about the landed and the not landed person, um, I could just go pull out this book and, and say, well, maybe he looked like this. Maybe this guy, yeah. the rich guy, looked like that. Um, you know, and of course we did read this book. So, <laughs> so yeah. that was no, another love, great book. I love picture books for that, being able to, because I always, 
this is this is my philosophy. I think that a lot of families where the young kids are advanced readers, like you have a five or five to seven year old who's reading at like a fifth grade level, they skip the picture books and they jump right into these chapter books. And I feel that one of the things that picture books gives us is a frame of reference for what these objects not in our daily life are are what they look like like do you know yes. what a plow is yes. if you're a city kid do you know what a plow is do you know what a hand trowel is no but if you're reading these picture books about gardening you do and so i really yes. think that they they give this firm foundation for the bigger world around you outside of the world you would experience on a daily basis that is just you can't replace that right yeah do you probably remember this book tiki tiki yes. tempo Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so much is placed on the older, older child. The elder right. sibling order does matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sibling, um, it's a, a very um, patriarchal, fraternal culture, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. um, having a son is good news. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so um, very humorous. But I think it just reemphasizes how um, so much is placed on the eldest. Um, mm -hmm. I think I mentioned about that book, I see how the eldest one who's holding the younger son. Um, right. So uh, a lot of importance is placed on the older child. So I don't know how many books I, I showed you there. Was that about 10 or more? Yeah, no, that was, <laughs> those were great. Was we love great. these books. This is completely <laughs> unrelated, but humorous to me. So you were talking about the Blue Willow mug or the Blue Willow plate. And I did not plan yes. this at all. I'm using my Red Willow mug. And this is Calamity Wear. Oh, I, I, don't know if you've, I don't know if you've heard of the company Calamity Wear. But they, they take the Blue Ugh. Willow and then they make it into disasters. So we were having this disastrous oh. year. We had this disastrous year with right. our house fire and all these other yeah. things that were happening. And so my friend Sheila sent Eric and I these mugs. And so they have the pagoda, but then instead of the birds, they have pterodactyls. And they have like robots and yes. this giant toad and just all these like funny things are happening and like the snowman is melting and there's a Loch Ness monster. And so just all these funny things. But I saw your blue willow plate and I was like, that's so pretty. And I have my red willow cup. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Disastrous. Um, but I um, loved hearing the story. Like I didn't even, it, it helped me to understand my mug better because I just thought the pterodactyls oh, were yeah. random, but now realizing that they are a joke from the, the birds that the, the story turned that, into. Yes. Yeah, like now, yes. now I have yeah. more of an understanding of the humor that went into the design. Um, so this is another book. It's called, uh, it's not a picture book. I actually, uh, it says to grandmother's house. And one thing I wanted to show you is this right here is they're making dumplings together. I love so, it. So dumplings are... I'm sure you've had dumplings, right? Um, it's uh, it's actually, so they're coming to visit their grandmother and they're going to make dumplings together. Um, and it's a very big event. It's not like, you know, let's go and get a happy meal and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh -huh. I, I would say every culture has this, right? A Latin mm -hmm. culture, they make tamales together. Um, right. Maybe in the Greek culture, they make a uh, spot and no, uh, I don't know how to say that, but it's got, um, it's a pouch, uh, like a ravioli almost. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a really great book because it's real uh, photography. It's not picture yeah. book. And I know like, you talked about that, but this uh, photographer does an amazing job because he even shows you the homes uh, that shows you the very high thresholds to keep the water out and mm -hmm. how there's mm -hmm. the first door and the second door because families... Uh, back then, and even today, uh, ex uh, Chinese traditional families live with their extended family. Um, mm -hmm. Usually the mom will have their grandmother or grandfather, um, and it's not unusual. Um, so here it is. Here's this high, you see this high threshold here? They're going into the, uh, the house of their grandmother, but right. it's, um, it's pretty ancient looking to me. 
but uh, they're actually uh, in the streets of Beijing. So I've actually never been there, but I wanted the kids to understand a little about uh, about the architecture and just again. Um, so what were the high thresholds for again? When the water, water rises, out, um, like from a river? Yes. Yeah, the flooding okay. was not uncommon. Um, okay. In 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 uh, China, so. Okay. Yeah, and so then they show you actual people doing Tai Chi um, exercises in the public square. So, um, so the, the subtitle I, on that I, we're one, in the Midwest here. I believe the subtitle oh, on that I'm one sorry. said that it, it takes place in ancient Beijing. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Old Town so, Beijing. Yeah. To grandmother's house, a visit to, to Old Town Beijing. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. Do those dumplings have a so, name? Um, like, oh, yes, jiaozi. Yeah, they're, jiaozi. They're, that's how you say it in Mandarin, jiaozi. Okay. I could actually teach you something in Mandarin right now. Um, Please do. you like that? <laughs> yes. yes. I like to learn. Um, I'm terrible so, at languages, though, so I'll butcher it. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you if you can figure this out, okay? So, okay. first of all, I take the book, so I want you to take a book, if you have a book nearby, and since you're with RA, you better have a book, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I take the book. Okay, great. I open the book. I close the book. Okay. Yes. Now I take the book again. I open the book and I close the book. Okay. So now I'm going to say, wo na yi ban shu. Wo na yi ban shu. Wo na yi ban shu. Ban shu. Very good, Amber and Amanda. Wo da kai shu. Wo da kai shu. Yes. Very good. Is this one of those situations where we're accidentally calling our mother a horse? <laughs> like Amanda's over there saying, I shut my book, and I'm over here saying, I fish in the river. <laughs> Did I totally? <laughs> so, can I ask you? Which word to you meant book in Mandarin? Um, I don't think shu. probably shu. is it the wa? So wa is I. It's so I. Not okay. shu. Wo so shu. shu. Yes. Shu. shu? Okay. Yes. So, so, so like the object would be at the end of the sentence then? Well, it, that was a simple sentence. Like, I love you is a okay. simple sentence. But what that's a Charlotte Mason approach to learning Mandarin, right? It's um, mm -hmm. not telling, I'm not translating to you. You're, intu you're, you're intuitively figuring out the words. And mm -hmm. you figured out, uh, Amanda, that Chu meant book. And you are right. Yay. Well done. <laughs> you can speak Mandarin. <laughs> a little bit. If only we go to China and everyone talks about books, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> we'll be ready. So <laughs> I love that. So you know what? I've I've tried this. I've tried that approach on my kids, and they 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 can absorb it much better than you know, the translation method. So, mm -hmm. well, it's, I mean, you know, Charlotte Mason says that education is about relationships mm -hmm. um, and the relationships between ideas. And when you're just drill and kill, you're not yeah. getting any relational stuff. Right. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more relationship when I'm picking up a book and talking yes. about it. And you're interacting with the object too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, now, the other book I have, and I, this might be my last book here, is called Thank You, Mei Ling. Thank you, Mei Ling. 
So uh, this is a book about manners, by the way. And um, but what's beautiful about this book is that this is about preparing for Chinese New Year. And what's nice is that you can see that they're preparing by cleaning the house, mm -hmm. which is what they usually do. Um, they are uh, sending their son to go kaisi, to go to the market. And so the ducks are going along, but in there, uh, immersed in all this is a story about good manners. Um, you see the fruit, the pomegranate, which is in Chinese culture means uh, fertility. You'll give uh, pomegranates. Um, like I remember when uh, uh, sometimes when I was very young, we would go visit a married couple and pomegranates was like the thing you give because you want them to have many children. You know, they're no longer mm -hmm. on China, Chinese soil. They're in the United States. You can have as many as you like. <laughs> um, and so here you can see this lady out in the street, oh, I'm sorry, she's out in the street, she's making dumplings, jiaozi. Mm -hmm. And then this is the dragon, yeah. which is the number one astrological sign in um, China, uh, for the Chinese uh, zodiac. Um, he picked up some lanterns. Lanterns mm -hmm. means happiness. And uh, mm -hmm. he picked up a, a, a here... A duck-shaped lantern, yeah, but um, really just because he has ducks as pets. And then um, here is so sweet. His he's gonna have a little sweet bun, and he's gonna uh, he he's gonna eat it. And his friend is uh, visiting his, and uh, ogles his sweet bun, and, and so he shares. So mm -hmm. I just love this uh, this because again, it's just. It's set in a, a Chinese street, a, a Chinese surrounding, mm -hmm. and yet there's mm -hmm. a, a moral to the story of, you know, good manners. Um, right. So, so are the lanterns, are lanterns the similar, house. are lanterns similar to kites? I'm sorry? Are lanterns yes. similar to kites? Yeah, it, happiness. So kite um, the... Yes. Yeah. Uh, getting rid of evil spirits and also just, uh, wanting a, a festive, happy time. Yeah. It so, seems like um, there's so much positivity in Chinese symbolism. Yeah. You know, you, you know what, even, they even have, you know, candy. This is a Chinese candy. There's Chinese characters on it. I don't know if you can see it, but it actually means good. It, it, it says good luck. And you can see how the candy wrapper ma matches my jacket. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Red and gold is really big. <laughs> um, Those were my wedding okay. colors. Red and gold are just excellent colors. Oh, really? Were they? Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm going to leave nice. you with this last book for moms, uh, maybe if they want to learn uh, about the culture and learn it through the language. So, this is a lady that was in China for the author, she was in China for three years and she had noticed some uh, uh, idiosyncrasies of the Chinese language that reflect so much of the people. And one of the things she notices that the, the Chinese, all the Chinese words are one syllable. So it sounds like you're always angry, you know, because <laughs> there's nothing, um, there's no two syllables. It's always one syllable. So every word is built on one syllable. So you have to like, boop, 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 you know, and it's said very uh -huh. rapid fire, almost like a machine gun. Uh, and it could sound pretty if you say it slowly, but usually people speak it very fast. And so she, the author was saying that people, when they speak, they speak so abrupt, it's almost like they're angry at me. But in fact, that's not true. <laughs> it means you're in you're in the you're in we can talk in familiar familiar terms we don't have to have these um uh extra polite uh um preludes to our talk we can talk oh. very familiar and so sometimes and when it sounds so abrupt it's not to say i don't like you it's just that we do like you it and we feel that we can talk to you in this very abrupt way 
<laughs> I know it's okay. a story. <laughs> no, it makes sense. I like that. I like you, but and I will be a no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much for all these book recommendations. They're fantastic. Oh, yes. And you provided you provided some music for us that we're going to listen to at the end of the episode as the credits roll, basically. But it's the Jasmine song. Could you tell us a little bit about that? So Mo Li Hua is the famous Jasmine flower song. Probably most people have heard it when the Beijing Olympics took place. Um, it's the fragrant, it's a fragrant white flower, and it's an old folk song. And um, it's common in dim sum to have jasmine tea. So um, I've, I've played it for my kids. Uh, it's a national song, I would say, for the whole of China. Mm-hmm. If you say Mo Li Hua, they will just, they, they're, they're thinking of the, the tune in their head already. You know? mm-hmm. And it's just very well endeared. Um, you know, like in Sound mm-hmm. of Music, when they, they sing Edelweiss. Um, yeah. Right. Even though I don't know if that was truly uh, the the folk song of the Austrians, I just know that it was just so well loved that the whole audience was able to mm-hmm. sing along, right, with the Von Trapp family right. singers. And the same with Molly Hua. If you were to just walk out in uh, the streets and just say uh, Molly Hua, someone will likely uh, sing along with you or just kind of hum it silently. Uh, with you because it's just such a well-loved um, national song of the Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so oh, much nice. for sharing it with us. We we appreciated oh, our welcome. conversation and, and your time and for you to wear your beautiful jacket to show us and <laughs> your, your beautiful little teacups and your teapot. Did your teapot have a spout? I didn't see when you held it up and I was wondering if it had a unique so, design no no this is, does not have a spout this was actually a gift on uh that held jasmine tea um, oh okay so it's a tea but pot i do have tea pots that have okay. a spout but yeah yes right oh, that makes sense i was like man <laughs> so there must be this some trick to that <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh, no, no. <laughs> single serve. <laughs> oh, well, thank no, you. You're so really much. in with us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So funny. Oh, so so for everyone who's listening, there will be pictures on the show notes for things that Jan showed us that um, if you were listening instead of watching, you may have missed out on. So you can see those images in the show notes and all the books that Jan has shared will be um, listed and linked there as well. And we really appreciate your time, Jan, and sharing all of this with us. It was so interesting. And I feel like I learned so much. And And if you, yeah, go ahead. Were you saying something to me? And before we go, Jan, can you tell us just a little bit about your website? Oh, yeah. yes. Um, it's called maymaymandarin.weebly.com. And that is a landing place where um, people have asked me on occasions how to make Chinese food. So I just created a website and I've had asked, been asked how to teach Mandarin as well. And I... I kind of had that place as a landing place for a Charlotte Mason approach, as opposed to the tra- traditional approach to le- mm-hmm. learning language. And um, yeah, just anything that I've observed about Chinese culture, I'll put it there because it's just for me, it's almost like a scrapbook that in mm-hmm. in time, hopefully the kids will go back to it and say, oh yeah, this is what mom's um culture is about and it's partly uh our culture right because they're biracial as i mentioned so yeah maybe Uh, mandarin.weebly.com and um i I should also mention that sometimes if i ask them uh to tell me a story i I have another uh tell me a story again.weebly.com you know sometimes i i i'm not about unabashed to ask them tell me in mandarin you know tell me in the target language uh, of a, a journal entry that you, as best as you can, you know, if, if mm-hmm. it's uh, uh, Chinglish, as I say, a combination of terms <laughs> in English, it's fine, you know? Yeah. 
That's a great idea. So we hope that this was an encouragement to anyone starting out on heritage threads to not feel overwhelmed and to just take things one day at a time, one book at a time, one bite at a time, as the case may be. And the stories are truer than true. And we'll talk to you all next time.